Hey guys, my name is Matimio, and today I decided to go back and play Battlefield Play for free. Uh, this has been a game I've always wanted to try. I know that many of you have recommended it since it's based off Battlefield 2's engine, and I love Battlefield 2 back in the day, and so I, I was really excited. I wanted to play on all of the nostalgic best maps in Battlefield 2. You got Sharky Peninsula, you had Stark at Karkin. I wanted to play on all those maps, have a good time, have a good experience, and that's what I assumed I was going to get jumping into this game. But just after a couple hours, it quickly became apparent that that was simply not going to be the case. Like, I jumped in and had a pretty sour taste in my mouth throughout the entire experience. And the first thing that you notice right off the bat is that there is constantly micro stuttering everywhere. Like, you sprint, you stutter, the enemy stutters, and it just doesn't feel good. I tried to figure out if this was just on my end. I went online to see if there were other people that were experiencing this. I, tr I watched a lot of videos and every single video I came across, this micro stuttering or whatever you want to call it lag was apparent in all of them. And so I, I guess I'm just assuming it's part of the engine. Maybe it's just part of the Battlefield play for free, play for free experience. But for me, it got old very, very quickly. And then on top of that, the gameplay itself feels clunky. Like, I realize that this is supposed to be an old-feeling game. Like, it's based off Battlefield 2's engine, but you would have assumed that they would have tried to modernize things a little bit, because this this was created in 2011, and they've also done some other things in the game to modernize it. Like, they've changed the customization options. There was not customization, at least for weapons in Battlefield 2, or at least not to my knowledge. Uh, they also increased the or improved the graphics. They have a rush game mode, which was not available back in Battlefield 2. So it was clear that they, they did did attempt to try to modernize things, but they completely skimped on the gameplay experience. Like, it, it, it feels old. Like, I, I get that some people may enjoy that, they may go back and play Battlefield 2, and that's exactly what they would experience. But at the same time, it's like, I, I get it, you know, it's, it's supposed to feel like an old game, but it really feels like an old game. It feels clunky, the, the shooting mechanics feels off, and so while, yes, for some people they may really appreciate that, for someone like me who's been playing modern first-person shooters for a while now, you know, you, you get used to that smooth gameplay like in Battlefield 4 or like really any modern first-person shooter, you jump into this, which is only three years old at this point because it was produced in 2011, it, it's it's just not as fun as I assumed it would be. This, this could be just completely on me, but just after a couple hours, I was like, okay, I've had my fun with this gameplay. I'm, I'm, I'm going to move on to the modern first-person shooters. Uh, but probably the most outlandish aspect of this entire game is the way that they set up their their payment method and the way that you unlock weapons initially i assumed that i'd be able to play for a couple hours i would get some in-game currency and then i'd be able to buy a weapon forever i feel like i'd be able to unlock it i'd be able to mess around with it unlock the customization options and i could go from there and while that's technically true you can purchase a weapon forever in this game own it for eternity with in-game currency at least from how quickly I was unlocking things, it would take you forever. Like, I think I got a thousand points through the couple hours that I played, and that thousand points meant nothing. Like, one weapon, I think, required 105,000 in-game currency points. Like, it was just ridiculous. And so, really, the only way that you can go about it is by purchasing it with real-world money. And so, I was like, okay, let's see how much these cost. I went and clicked on the L85A2. $20 to unlock that bad boy. $20 for a free-to-play game. It gets worse. One of the customization options for that gun costs another $20. So if you want one of the badass scopes or you want a, want, you know, a different, uh, different stock or a different customization option, put another $10 on that, another $20. You can spend more money on one weapon in this game than a AAA title costs at launch. I wouldn't even think that this game would be worth $20. Like, if they just made this so that it was like $15 purchase, I would say that that's a fair deal. Like, if you got all the weapons, you got all the customization options, you put down $15, I I would say the game would be a lot of fun. But the fact that just one weapon, one weapon in this game costs $20, and if you want to further customize it with some of the most expensive customization options in the game, it could go up to like 40 or 50 or even more money for just one weapon, that is just outrageous. And then, to make matters worse, if you want to play with all the different classes, you have to spend even more money. Like, I first played as the supports, or like the medic, and the assault class. I was like, okay, this is cool, I'm having fun, but I also like to try out the recon. I, I, I'm getting shot by bolt-action rifles, I'd like to give that a go, see how it plays out. And then, when I went to create my character, 
it was like, oh, you would like to try out a new class? You've already, f you filled up all of your slots, put down another couple of dollars to unlock another slot. I was like, you've got to be kidding me. I can't even play all of the classes. I can't even get the full gameplay experience, at least with all the different classes without spending money with this. That is just, that's just ridiculous. Like how much money do you need to invest into this game to actually get the full gameplay experience? And so at least for me, just after a couple hours, I had my fill of Battlefield play for free. Like, I did have fun. It was cool to play on all the nostalgic maps. Playing on Sharky Peninsula Rush was a nice change of pace because that was not available back in Battlefield 2. But just after a couple hours dealing with the stuttering, dealing with people that had unlocked all these great weapons, it seemed like shotguns were amazing in this game or some of the, the higher tier assault rifles just blew me out of the water. Just the fact that the, the pay system is so unfair. Like, it's, it's, it's clearly a cash grab. Like, they just want to get people to buy as much as they can and then just keep them buying constantly, buying all these customization options. It left a pretty sour taste in my mouth. And this is honestly a, the best example of how not to do a free-to-play game, at least in my opinion. Like, League of Legends, I know, has a system where you can buy the champions, but at least it doesn't cost $20 to buy one of those champions, another 40 to unlock all of their abilities. Like, that's basically what it felt like when I went to the store section for Battlefield Play for free. And so, in my opinion, this game was a pretty big letdown. I had high hopes. I know that this was a little old. It's not, you know, Battlefield 3 or Battlefield 4, but I was expecting a little bit more. But after having the, the terrible micro stuttering going in and seeing just how pay to win it was, I, I left pretty sad. I was not, I was not a happy camper. Uh, but that's about it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, let me know what your experience has been with Battlefield Play for free. Have you enjoyed it? Did you think it was as bad as I did? Let me know down below in the comment section. Uh, but until tomorrow, have a good one and take it easy.